The Bengals have made plenty of changes to their roster and their coaching staff this offseason, but some concerns remain. Let's get to the biggest concerns they're facing ahead of training camp. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Erpine. He is Andrew Fox Miller, and we are part of the Big Play Network and presented by Typico Sportsbook and Garage Beer. And you can catch us every single Tuesday right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk at 8 Eastern, weekly on Valley Sports. And Andrew, the offseason program, well, it continues right now. The Bengals still full steam ahead, but we're close to the summer break, which means... Well, it's time to, to look at this roster and discuss the biggest concerns, biggest questions, because there are plenty of questions that face this team when we decided to go with this topic. And let's start with the offense. What came to mind? What concerns you most? What are you thinking about the most right now? Because let's be honest, this isn't a perfect football team. There are plenty of concerns and questions that they're facing right now as we uh, head into the month of June. Yeah, so, okay, first of all, is it fair to say maybe just get Joe Burrow out of the way? Because, I mean, like, I think that's always going to be front and center, right? Like, I mean, I guess we'll know by training camp, right? But at the end of the day, like, can we start the season right? Are we healthy? Like, that's that's always going to be first on my mind. I don't know about you. No, I, I get it. And that's actually where I want to start. Oh, is, okay. Is not, not the, all right, is Joe Burrow going to be 100% healthy? I, I really don't. And we did this a few weeks ago. I don't really have many concerns there. I just don't have much much doubt that he's going to be healthy and it's going to go the right way. And we played a clip from Dr. David Chow about that. And I just, I feel like that's what's going to happen. Here's my Joe Burrow concern. And it is my number one concern. It really has nothing to do with this current injury. It has to do with Joe Burrow as a tough, you know what? He plays through pain. And something he said at the start of the offseason program where he needs to be smarter about that. I think it's much easier said than done to do that. Mm. Because I'll let you know, I'm older than Joe Burrow by a few years. I'll let you know when I learn that. Because I, I I don't think that it's it's easy to learn. And I'm not one of the three best quarterbacks ever. Like I think that's really hard for people in general to learn when they're not professional athletes. And Burrow isn't just a professional athlete. He's the best player uh, on on one of the best teams in the NFL. And so when you go up all these rungs, it's like, oh, well, of course he's going to want to play through pain, play through pain. And so my concern is just learning that it's okay. And I, I, by the way, I do think like, like last week, he didn't par participate in every single practice. And so I do think we're seeing signs of him being disciplined here and not necessarily playing through pain, especially when it doesn't matter. If it's week 10 and the, there's a, a key divisional game, of course you want to play through it. But if it's training camp or, in this case, OTAs, you don't have to, especially when you're coming back from a wrist injury. So I, I do think there is a, a concern there that it's much, much easier said than done to be disciplined and have that perspective if you tweak, tweak your shoulder, let's say, or something like that at some point. And knock on wood, that doesn't happen, but it's football. Things are going to happen. He's going to get nicked up. Yeah, I mean, and I, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with this, but you do bring up a good point of easier said than done. But it was said, Joe Burrow said it. He put it out there, said, I'm aware of it. I need to work on, you know, recognizing limitations, recognizing things that I need to do to rest and better myself. He said it. So had he not said it, would it be a bigger concern? Would we not even be thinking about it? I'm sure we'd be thinking about it. But yeah, does that change that? And the other element here is, uh, of course, if the, like the Monday night game, against the Rams last year. I, I wanted him to play in that game before the game. That's not hindsight. I said he should play. And everyone's like, no, you can't play him. Oh, my God, you can't play him. But they, they won that game by one possession, and they were better because he was out there. Like, I, I want him to play. But having that perspective is certainly a concern because I, I don't want him to push it July 30th or August 15th. And and so there, that that's concern number one. But on offense, I got to be honest with you, Andrew. I don't have many, many concerns. I, and I have some questions. I wonder how the offensive line is going to come together. I wonder how this offense is going to look without Brian Callahan, without Tyler Boyd, without Joe Mixon. But I like Dan Pitcher. I think that they have a a, a, a quartet almost of options for wide receiver three and, and in the slot without Tyler Boyd. And I think Zach Moss and Chase Brown 
give them a true running back by committee. And so all of those things could be concerns or just questions, but I'm not really too worried about any of them falling into place. Are you, or are there anything else that, that stands out to you from an offensive concern standpoint? I think when we say concerns, it's going to be the usual concerns that I think any team, any fan of any team is going to have. In this case for the Bengals, I, I'm with you. I like Dan Pitcher. But it is a new coordinator. It's new personnel with a new coordinator. Can it all come together? Can they start the season with wins? Can they start the season with a statement? That's that's my concern is, can it all come together? Obviously, Zach Taylor is the constant there from an offensive standpoint and the play calling. But that's that's one of them. Honestly, it's that. And I agree with you. Backfield, notice at this point, though, none of us have said anything about the offensive line. And I'm not saying there's no concerns there, but I feel like a lot of people will bring that up first because it's just every single year. It's one of the first things people say. I don't feel like that's top of mind with me this year as far as concerns. No, I and, and we can do this on a future show. I expect them to be good. My expectations for the offensive line are much higher. It's not oh, well, I think they can get by with this group. And that's been the feeling. Ah, oh, if they stay healthy, they can get by. No, if they if these dudes stay healthy, they better be one of the better offensive lines, period. Yep. Not just in the AFC North or AFC. or They better be one of the best offensive lines. And so my other concern offensively would be explosive plays. I think if this Bengals offense is going to be a top offense in the league, which I expect when you have Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, uh, obviously T Higgins, who's going to show up and play uh, Jermaine Burton. Uh, you mix him in with a Charlie Jones and Andre Yosevash, all these guys, Zach Moss and Chase Brown, Mike Gesicki. I, you know, the depth chart, ladies and gentlemen, I got to keep reading them off to you. The point is you want to be explosive. And if this Bengals offense is going to do what we really haven't seen it do during this run, which is be consistent week in and week out and be one of these high end offenses week in and week out and not just here and there. It's got to start with finding ways to generate explosive plays regularly. And it's something they've struggled to do the past two years. That has to change this year. And whether that's Dan Pitcher, whether it's the change of personnel with Zach Moss and the, the slot wide receiver options that they have, that needs to change this offseason. Or, well, this season, it has to change. We need to see bombs away, Andrew. Joe Burrow going deep and these guys creating explosive plays after the catch. You bring up one, I'll bring this one last concern up very quickly. You bring up a Chase Brown, for example. We talk about these young players mm -hmm. that are coming in. Rookies, yeah. second-year players. I don't want any more of this. Where Where is that guy? He, he played pretty well in preseason. He played really well in week three and then just disappeared. I don't want that. I don't want healthy scratches. Chase Brown better be out there getting carries. You know, Jermaine Burton, he better be out there seeing talk well i don't want to say seeing targets i guess that's joe's prerogative but he should be out there he should be out there running around mm -hmm. on that field i don't want to question what th he didn't even fly with the team what what's i don't want that that is a concern i don't i don't like that game james sure i totally get that and you know my other concern and it doesn't have to do with the offense i'm concerned that we never talk about our outfits and somehow we're wearing the same darn shirt this week yeah we had a choice we could have we could have just not recorded this and changed I, I thought i was a little more fashion forward than you and and you know i, I was kind of pushing it you, you even bring the hat the ensemble here yeah. with the the cincy the hat Head yeah. Cares, yeah, yeah doing me yeah, yeah the eclipse edition see i i always, I always have one handy we could really match now Ooh. we could really match now it's no problem I, oh i've got that line around we'll get that out yeah yeah that's what i thought that's I got what it I around thought. here don't you worry i'll find it from the bengals offense to uh, me matching with Andrew to our next concern. Let's get to the defense. I think it's longer. I think there are more questions. We will do that coming up next right here on Enter the Jungle. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine. You can catch us every single Tuesday night on Cincinnati Bengals Talk Weekly on Bally Sports. And Andrew, we talked about the offense. We talked about our questionable fashion choices, or at least mine, since I'm matching you and I can't believe it. Let's get to defense. The biggest concerns about this defense as of now, as the roster stands, there's a lot of new faces. There's a lot of changing faces. The coaching staff, mostly the same on defense. A little, uh, some changes on the back end. But overall, what concerns do you have? 
I, I think there's one constant thing I've said. I said it going into free agency. I said it coming out of free agency. I said it going to the draft. I said it coming out of the draft. It's cornerback. I really like what they did with the secondary overall with safety. I like the idea in theory of Dax Hill moving into corner. I, I, there's just a big concern there. Your best corner right now is Cam Taylor Britt. That's not a bad thing. It's just that after that, Questions, concerns. DJ Turner, is he going to take the next step? I, I I don't know. What are we doing? I I just feel like they should be getting some veteran depth. They haven't done it. That's a big concern. And I'd throw in two, of course, opposite Trey Hendrickson, edge rushers, pressure and quarterback. That's always a thing. That's like the O-line if we're going to talk offense. But corner for me is just that constant. It, it, it's eating at me. Do, do you forget that they, they address corner in the draft? Is that is that not good? Josh Newton isn't good. I enough like for you, huh? Josh Newton. I do, but again, I I haven't seen him play in the NFL yet. I just it's going to be a concern until I see that. Sure. No, I agree with you. I I agree. I, they're a bit shallow at the outside corner spot, and I'm bullish on DJ Turner. I'm probably as high on Dax Hill as anyone. He's in a tough position though. It's it's a tough ask to say. All right. Well, you, you played. Get get what they've done with Dax his first year. He played deep safety. Then Jesse Bates comes back at, at, in camp. He's playing deep safety. Jesse Bates comes back. And then he plays nickel corner, corner, and safety and special teams and doesn't get many snaps at safety. Last year, he played two different safety spots. And now they're moving him to, to outside corner. It's just a lot to ask and to expect him to win that job. I do like DJ Turner. And I think he's got the talent to, to start in this league. But they're just young. Dax hasn't played a lot at corner. DJ Turner is in year two. Outside of Mike Hilton, they are young at cornerback. Even Cam Taylor Britt, who I think a lot of people look at as the leader. All right, well, that's great. And I get it. I like Cam a lot. He's in year three. He's not in year 12 or year six. He's in year three, going into year three. And so, yeah, I, I get why corner is, is certainly a concern. We'll see if they address that at some point. Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. There are some birds chirping that that could happen. I think the other concern here, and this may surprise some people, but I think the defensive line is, is going to be what the defensive line is going to be, and that's going to be such a topic. I'm a bit concerned that these linebackers, that these linebackers that you're paying big money to, took a step back. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned that they're not going to be able to thrive with how the team is set up now, where you have Sheldon Rankins, B.J. Hill, Chris Jenkins, you're banking on all these guys on the defensive front, but you don't have that true, pure nose tackle. And that's no disrespect to McKinley Jackson. He's not going to be what DJ Reader was. And so right. when you lose that, when you evolve at that in that defensive front, will these linebackers be able to evolve and, and still have the impact that they had? I think they struggled at times last year. So hopefully they get back to it and show that they're staples of this defense because they're getting paid. Right? I'm not going to be concerned about McKinley Jackson or Chris Jenkins. Those guys are rookies. They're going to have their ups and downs. I already know that. But what can't be baked in is veterans that are on their second contracts struggling at times. You need those guys to thrive in this defense. You need them to be leaders. Yeah, you look at the defense overall, that's one area. To your point, veterans on their second contract. Talk about youth on the overall team, youth on the defense. That's one area that should be solidified, should be set. And maybe it will yep. be, maybe it is, but I, I understand the concern there. Exactly. It's concern might be strong, but it's just like a little note in the back of my head. Like, all right, well, if this defensive line struggles early, can the linebackers help make up for it? Yeah. Because if you're paying two veteran linebackers to start and be that, and heck, they brought Akeem Davis Gaither back. So you're three deep at linebacker. You're guy, you have guys that have been in the system. You need those linebackers to be dogs. And we know they can be. It's not no disrespect. We know they can be. It's just about getting the most out of them, even without DJ Reader, because he's not walking through that door. He's in Detroit and he's going to stay in Detroit. A guy that did walk through the door is Chris Jenkins. And I do think he's going to be a big factor in that defensive tackle room. Let's get to what Chris Jenkins had to say last week, Andrew, right here on the show. I think it got overlooked a little bit. I don't think it made its rounds. But it's, it's a clip that you have to hear, and Andrew and I will react to it coming up next. 
Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Erpine. He is Andrew Fox Miller. And last week we caught up with Chris Jenkins, the Bengals' uh, newest member of the defensive tackle room. They took him in the second round of the 2024 NFL draft. And Jenkins did something, Andrew, that no one ever does. He praised the Bengals' facilities. He hmm. praised what they had for the players to recover. This is uh, quite interesting. Here's uh, Jenkins in a one-on-one from last week. I mean, we got the we got the training facility. Like I've never even seen cryotherapy before or red light therapy, but we have that here. So we have access if our body okay feels a little sore after the oh we're right back at it, ready to roll. Like it's yeah, it's it's insane here. Like the technology is lit. Have you done the the red light yet or the, the yes? And I went to sleep, but yes, it was awesome. <laughs> it was, it was, I did. You fell asleep. Oh, I set, an, I set an alarm in advance. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's yeah. Like it's the technology is, is yes, yes, surprisingly yes. Wow, I went there. So you laid it. Describe it for our our viewers. It's 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 like like a red light tanning bed that has like health properties. I think it I think it helps you heal faster. I'm no trainer myself, but all I do know is I woke like every time I've done that I woke up feeling ten times better. So it works. So much talk about the Bengals facilities, and I will say that that and you can check out that entire interview on last week's show. Uh, right here on Cincinnati Bengals talk, but all this talk about the Bengals facilities and what did they do? They upgraded. They got red light therapy last year. They got the cryotherapy. Uh, they got all these different elements to help players recover. And a rookie that comes in from the national champion, Michigan Wolverines is like, man, look at these facilities. I'll tell you right now, Andrew, that's rare. That's rare with most NFL teams because these college teams have awesome stuff. So the, the fact that he did that, it is noteworthy. And I wanted to revisit it because I thought that was a key part of the interview from last week. I mean, is it more noteworthy that the Bengals have this or more noteworthy that Michigan did not? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Cry. It's more noteworthy that the Bengals have it Be, okay. because of the reputation. Sure. You, you've I heard understand. it your, your entire life. Yeah. Your entire life you've heard. It. I know I have. Oh, man, they have small towels and you you, you got to go to the vending machine and all that. And it, it just... Obviously, that isn't the case now, but this is something that's much more forward thinking. They're redoing the locker room right now, which is why anytime there's a news conference and you hear work going on in the background, people are like, what is that noise? They're redoing the locker room. It's it was down to the studs last I heard. So I'm I'm hoping that it's uh, it's ready for camp. But uh, yeah, I think that that's that, that at least to me was noteworthy and stood out. I might have to look into this, James. Uh, cryo red light prepare for my fantasy football season when I will surely dominate you with this therapy. Who won your league last year? We don't need to, we don't need to talk about the past. I'm telling you what my, my plans oh, are moving who, forward. Who's the reigning champ? That's all. That's it. That's a 2023 headline. Speaking of champions and, and trash talk, a Bengals legend returned to the field. We will react to his performance next on enter the jungle. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. He's Andrew Fox Miller. And Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson was back on the Bengals practice field last week. Did you see this, Andrew? He was back. He was out there. He was in cleats. He was <laughs> catching passes. And he was not open when going up against a guy that you're already doubting, rookie Josh Newton. Uh, look at me just giving you bulletin wow. board material. You're doubting wow. him. And he put the clamps. Bump and run fig, I think, is his uh, Twitter handle. He put the clamps on Chad Johnson, didn't even let him get off the line. I wanted a news conference with Chad after that, by the way. I feel like that was an easy opportunity. I wanted a statement. It could have been from McDonald's or Jay Alexander's, wherever he wanted to have it. That's all I wanted. Anytime I see Chad now, I got to be honest with you. And by the way, I'm, I was surprised that he couldn't get off the line. I still think of Chad like I'm 15 years old. And, and watching him just dominate. So that's probably a me problem. In, in at the same time, Chad did have in retirement this cornerback phase where he would tweet at T. Higgins, for example, Jamar Chase, that he would lock them up. And, and so he's definitely had this cornerback phase. Well, we ran into Chad at uh, the Roger Bacon stag earlier this year. And, and Andrew was there for this. But my first words to Chad were, you can't cover me. 
And so as delusional as he is thinking he can just walk out on the NFL practice, I'm just as delusional. I don't think Chad could cover me. I think I would be able to get open against him tomorrow, the next day, a week from now, next year. I, I think he has about as much of a chance uh, at covering me as you do at beating me in fantasy football. And wow. so hopefully we can make that happen at some point. I, I, I would, I would, Oh my God. I would love to watch that if for so many reasons there, there's no losing scenario from, from where I'm sitting. If I get to witness that no matter the outcome, do you think he could, you think he could guard me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to side with 85 on anything athletic versus you. I'm just going to, I have to, what? What, 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 come on, man. Did you see him out there right now? Typical prop bet. I'm putting my money on Chad. I don't care what the odds are. He looked like he would get blown away by a stiff wind when he went up against Josh Newton. A stiff wind would push him over. And you think he's going to guard me? No chance. <laughs> I, I really, I don't. After seeing that, I'm like, man, there, there really is no chance. There's no way. There's no way. Now, if I have you at quarterback, maybe. But if oh. I have a real quarterback, yeah. if I have a real quarterback, it's no, because there's going to be a window. There's going to be a window. Now, if you throw it five yards behind me, Chad might be there. L let's start with initial goal here. Your goal is to get open. Doesn't matter if you're catching a ball or if the ball's getting to you. Just get open. I'm, I'm taking that bet. I'm taking Chad. You mentioned, you, yeah, you'd always wager on 85. Well, it doesn't matter if I'm lined up against 85. Or I'm thinking six. I'm thinking touchdown. I'm not just thinking getting open. We're going we're gonna to get that touchdown. I'm going to break the tackle, and we're going to go. So uh, speaking of going – it is time for us to go. Our viewers certainly think I'm delusional. That's fine. Hopefully we can make that happen one day. I would love it. Oh, yeah. It'd be amazing. That would be a special episode of Enter the Jungle. It'd be a lot of memes. But I'm expecting that. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine. Catch us every single Tuesday at 8 Eastern right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Enter the Jungle.